and welcome to Bring Your Game On series. Uh, we are today with Nadan from Team Dynamics and he's going to introduce us a very cool uh, game. So thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Mm. I think it would be good just to kick off with the presentation and the floor is yours. Okay. So um, again, hi, my name is Nadan. I'm from... Uh, I'm the owner of a company called Team Dynamics, located in Israel, working all over the world. We've been uh, around Lockwiz since uh, November 2017, um, creating many games uh, over the years. But uh, today I'm going to bring out a game, bring up a game called Battle Bingo, which had become our leading superstar game. Um, with uh, tens of thousands of people uh, going through this game, both online and out in the field. Okay, so originally the game was planned to be an outdoor game. This is how it was built. We used uh, the bingo structure, which I will show you um, in a minute, because it is very easy for people to understand the winning conditions. We wanted to make a simple game uh, and one of the ways to simplify the game was to make sure that everybody knows what the winning conditions are. So if you tell everyone who ever played bingo, hey, you're going to play bingo, they know that they need to complete a row, a column, an X, uh, a frame, or the, the entire form um, to uh, first. They have to be the first one to do this, to win, uh, to win prizes. Unlike other games that uh, we've created and we see on the market. This game is all about winning prizes as, as the event progresses. So people don't wait until the end to win the prizes. They keep winning the prizes. We actually call it stealing prizes uh, from the main pile. There are five prizes, one for each uh, achievement. Uh, and the fifth prize is actually not for the entire uh, uh, card, the ticket uh, field, but for the highest score in the game. So this game allows a lot of strategy, and um, um, you will see the riddles soon, so you'll understand why the riddles are calling for collaboration all over. These are not Google riddles that if you know the answer, you or if you don't, who's the first president of the United States or something like that. These are uh, riddles that um, incorporate associative thinking. And because of the way they're built, five people can solve them together. Actually, when we have four people trying to figure out what's going on, it's better than like one person doing this. Okay, so that involves strategy. It involves solving riddles. I'm going to start by showing the basic uh, element of, of uh, the game. I'm going to share my screen in a second. But I want to make... Um, some people come to this uh, uh, battle bingo uh, thinking that if they know bingo, they know this game. So in regular bingo, each person gets a different card, a different ticket with different number arrangements. And um, the host just pulls out different numbers. And then you hope that the numbers that were pulled are like allow you to finish a combination. This game works a little bit backwards. Everybody has the same ticket. And everyone chooses which cards they want to pull, kind of which balls or which uh, uh, places they want to mark. The choice is not just, oh, I want to do this and, and that's, this is it. They have to actually go there to pick it up in the field. So I'm just going to talk about the mechanism of the game. This is actually the beginning of the presentation of the Battle Bingo, the online or the um, kind of in one place, uh, a, a kind of a presentation Battle Bingo and not the outside but um, it follows uh, pretty much the same rule. So um, I'm gonna share my screen now. Okay, so this is how, uh, let's, I'll try to share my screen to optimize for video. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna show you how it starts. This is, again, this starts uh, for the online version, and then I'll show you, I'll show you how both games actually divert to different types of, of mechanisms. So let's begin.
Okay, so um, this is how the game starts with a lot of music and uh, actually the game through its entirety. I don't know if we'll have a chance to show uh, how the screen looks uh, to make uh, screen recordings for this. But if we do, you will see that it has very um, um, cool animation all over the place, even inside the app. Everything you do is like there's a movie coming on and some some swirl of fire, water, earth, uh, earth and air. Uh, it's a very cool game in that sense. So as for the instructions, uh, people simply uh, putting uh, the regular username and password, they press start and then uh, put in their team. The next thing that they're, they're going to see in the online game, they're only going to see, or the presentation game, the, the they're only going to see, we, we're just going to call them indoor games and outdoor games, okay, for, for now, from now on. So in the indoor games, they're, they're just going to see the bingo ticket just like this, okay? Uh, in, in the outdoor game, they, they're going to see the bingo ticket, but they're also going to see the map, which I will show you in a minute. So basically, the way that the game is built is that there are 36 riddles. Each one is represented by one of these um, uh, colorful circles with icons inside them. It doesn't matter if the team gets it correct or incorrect, they will still have the ticket marked. So I, I, I have a question. I got it incorrect. I will still get an X at the relevant place in the ticket. Okay, if I got the, the blue eagle, the one up over here in the upper corner, I will still get Blue Eagle Mark. But if I get it correctly, I will also get the points. And this is a key, a very important element in the game because you always move forward in this game. Even if you get it wrong, you moved one step forward, okay, toward uh, one of your uh, winning conditions. So um, uh, points de depend on the difficulty level of the question. Air, earth, water, and fire, okay, air is the easiest. Fire is the hardest, of course. Uh, and points are important for two reasons. The first reason is that the first prize is given to the team that got the most amount of points, okay? And the second reason is the middle cross here. There is a middle cross with numbers on it. This will activate, this will actually get marked only when you get to the particular score. So until you got uh, 130 points, you will not get 130 points marked, okay? Uh, so everything, every row, every column, everything goes through the middle X, as you will see. Okay, a middle cross, not X. Nine icons in the game. Okay, um, we're not, we have it in the instruction page, but we're not expecting people to know this during the game. Uh, the thing about the, the these icons that they can uh, give you com combos. What does it mean? There are four riddles from each icon. If you complete all four eagles correctly, it will have some animation on the screen of combo eagle with fire spinning around and water and like everything is splashing together. And then you see the eagle and it says combo eagle and you get bonus points. So once you start playing, it's like a slot machine in a casino. It's like it keeps beeping and giving you bonuses. It's a lot of fun. It's built to be like a lot of fun and action. You can actually also get combos for uh, for elements, if you get all the, the air correct or earth or water, these are like higher combos. So you can win four prizes in the game. First team or person to complete a row, a column, an X, a frame, and of course the high score uh, will get prizes. Um, the, the, the way this mechanism works is that if you get a row, or any of these combinations, you will see a bingo flashing on your screen and it will give you a secret word. So we're not telling people shout bingo because everyone shouts bingo and we don't know who shouted bingo. And it's, so we, we give them secret words like Kawabanga or, or Zoltar or Xavier or all sorts of stuff that they will not say randomly. Um, and so we put these, uh, they will see the word first team to write down the word in the chat wins the prize. So even if they're 10th place, even, even if they're the 100th place out of uh, of 100 uh, teams, if they got the role first, it's theirs. Okay? So if they wrote the word first, when we do it indoor, it's the first one that shouts. Of course, they don't have to, we see them. They don't have to write in the chat, oh, they say Zoltar, Zoltar! And we know that they 
that they got this uh, piece. Okay, this is another element only for online games, so I'm not going to go too much into it. But this, if you answer incorrectly one of the diagonal questions, uh, then you get a block on the bingo. They disappear over time when you pass the 400 points a bar. They start disappearing and switching into marks. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you the riddles right now, the way they work. Again, this is how the online game works, the indoor game works. The outdoor game, it simply pops up the two first questions, and then I will show you how they divert, okay? So there, there are two types of riddles in the game, besides for the riddles that you want to fit yourself. So I, I will talk about it later, but this game is highly adjustable and accustomable. We, we can create an entire game that's about a company. We usually don't recommend it, but we can, okay? We usually don't recommend it, but we can. We, we, you can do it about whatever you want. It's the mechanism that's important. But the riddles are very special, and I'll, I'm going to show you why. So this is the first question, like um, first type of question. It, it, it's a, The type is series. It's a series, and you can, when there's a series, you will see at the top, what is the next picture? And arrows. It's always from left to right. So I'm going to ask you, Lisa, what is uh, what is the series about? I think it is number. It's numbers. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. It's numbers. Great. So <laughs> it's numbers. Then what would be the next um, element here? What, what's missing? I think it's four. Okay. So what would it be? A, B, C, or D? Maybe, maybe then it's eight. D. And so D is eight. Not four. Mm -hmm. It is a number, but the question it was what is the next number? Ah, uh, four seasons. It's four seasons. Great. For all of you watching, we planned uh, for her to get this mistake. Oh, so she got took time. She got this it. took time. <laughs> <laughs> um so it's C, right. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is a simple trial one question. It pops on their screen. When they play outdoor, they see it on the screen when it's indoor. This is the second type of question. It says there is a connection between the pictures. Okay, so there's a connection. It's not a series. If you know what's how they're connected, then the next picture doesn't complete it. It kind of speaks to it. Okay, so what is the next picture? What is not the next picture? I would, I would go, I would go uh, for B because you need a hand to play this game. Okay, rock, paper, scissors, B, the hand, great. Okay, so just to tell all of you, because you're not holding the app right now, so you can't see how, how it actually works. But in the indoor game, we actually have a Lockwiz remote control that we've created over the phone. And so um, we, we simply, when we put something on the screen, we press one and then... It opens up on the apps for everyone to answer question one. Okay, when we're done, we press two, it opens up question two for everyone, and so on and so forth. For those of you who want this game, we'll actually get into the details of how you um, you create, how you enter the remote control. Because it's in every game, you need to know how to enter it, and then it just goes by the order. So this is the two trial questions, and now I'm going to show a few riddles in the game, so you will get a feeling of um, of it. There are 36 riddles. We're not going to show half of them even, uh, but we are going to show a few, okay? Uh, again, what you're seeing right now is the actual presentation of the indoor game with all of its effects and music and everything that comes with it, okay? So let's start. Are you ready? Yes. Let me give you a tip. Before time is up, because once I start it on your phone, time will start running down. If you're not sure, you better guess, okay? Before time runs out, because then it's an incorrect question. You have a one in one in four to answer correctly, which is, these are cool odds. I will take it for the lottery. Um, so this is one thing. And the second uh, advice I will give you is that um, until you figure out what the connection is up on the upper row or what type of series it is, don't look at the answers. They will just confuse you, mm -hmm. okay? And if you're not sure, you simply didn't get the connection. If you're not sure how it fits, you probably didn't get the connection. Okay, first question for you, Lisa.
Lisa, what is the next picture? Easy question, 40 seconds. Okay, time Eight. is running. And the question. Eight? Summer. 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 That's right. So <laughs> in the original game, we wait for the time to, to finish. We just want to make everyone accustomed to the time. But yeah, this is this series is about seasons and, and uh, correct. The answer is eight. Easy, By the way, right? I haven't played it before, so I don't know that. Oh, you it's... haven't? Okay. No. <laughs> let's let's go to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, second question. Also, easy question. Um, 40 seconds. It's an air element question. What is the connection between the pictures? Uh, it is apple, A. It's also A, right? Are we lazy to put two A's one after the other? Maybe, maybe. Perhaps. Whole game A's. Okay. Um, why? Why is it A? Why is it apple? The apple is a key element in the plot of uh, Snow White and also okay. Mr. Steve Jobs. But actually, I don't know the first one. So. Yeah, it's the Empire State Building. Yeah. So it's in the Big Apple in New York. Yeah, nice. But as you can see, you can get two pictures right and it mm -hmm. still works. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's move to the next one. It's a green question. Let's see what you can do with that. Green question. There is a connection between the picture. What's the connection? These are characters in The Wizard of Oz. Correct. But uh, how come they might come together? That's a, that's a good question. Mm. That's a good question. What's the connection? There is a connection between There is a them. connection. There is a fourth character who is a girl. So I would go for A, heels maybe? Yeah, the, it's not the heels. It's, it's the red shoes mm -hmm. that she took from the witch from the east, right? Mm. Okay. Oh, it's the red shoes. It's also very known in the movie. The first color um, mm -hmm. kind of uh, picture. Yeah. So it's A, Dorothy with the red shoes. So the next question is a blue question. I'm just going to show you a few blue and red questions mm -hmm. so you'll see like, how the difficulty level rises. And here is um, um, our advice for for the, 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 the players before we get to the tougher questions. So if you play in a team, and this is crucial, teams that follow this advice win more points. Say out loud what you see. Because someone might, because it's a lot about um, associations, someone might hear something and say, oh, oh, I know, it's just, it landed for me. I, I understand what's going on, okay? So I'm going to show you the next question. It's a blue question. There is a connection between the pictures. 60 seconds, 27 points. It's actually a, a Eagle, very alligator, Medusa, alphabet. A-M-H-M. Oh my gosh. This There's a connection. It's a tough question. It's a tough question. I remind you not to look at the answer. Say out loud what you see. Are these like um, brands of clothing? Maybe. And if they are, what would be the answer? Does then it fit? I, then I would answer? go for B. I don't remember the brand name at the moment, but uh, that's, that's, it's the guy that's playing. Actually, that's actually it. And I will say the, to the uh, yeah. to, to our listeners that I did not tell Lisa the answer for this. And she got it right. Oh my ding, gosh. Ding, ding, ding. You got it right. So it's actually, uh, yeah, Giorgio Armani. Okay. That's the symbol. Lacoste. Mm -hmm. Versace has the Medusa. Mm -hmm. And H&M. Mm -hmm. And so the correct answer is B, Polo. Okay. Nice. Nice. Two more questions and we're done with the questions. Again, there are 36 and they're very, very diverse. Okay, two more questions. So after the blue question, we have one gray question, which makes it just a bit easier. Okay. Here. What is the next picture? Oh, nice car. It is a 70s show. This is tough one. Yeah, it's it's actually a gray one, but it's a tough one. It's not a very tough one. You just need to figure out because we actually put everything out there. 
and once I tell you what the correct answer is, you will see that it's on the screen. This is a tough one. I would need a team member to solve it. Yeah, you need a team member. Okay, yeah. so we have the this 70s is a team, show. This is a team game. This is a team Six, game. 70s, correct, 70s, but you got the blue ones. Oh, for 60s, uh, 40s. Um, I think that might be B, internet. Yeah, 90s. 90s. It's, it's decades. It's the yes. 50s, 60s, 70s. The 80, you can actually see 1980, and then this. So as you see, you did it after time is up. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the game, you will kind of, if you didn't bet on something and nobody else knew the answer, then... But it is good if you have a game where you get something incorrect because otherwise it's too easy. <laughs> it's too easy? No. It's, uh, so, <laughs> so far, <laughs> we is. had... Questions that build your self-esteem. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now we are and, getting tough. <laughs> and, and trust me, we don't get a lot of ties in this game. Okay? Yeah. So the next question is a red question. Mm -hmm. And red questions usually have like more than one level of association. You have to figure out the connection, kind of understand what's like putting all of them together and then figure out like why... The answers are like they are, and the answers are usually more uh, deceitful or or they try to trick you in red questions, okay? There is a connection between the pictures. This is a red questions for 32 points. Diamonds are forever, infinity. Doctor says no, all seeing eyes, and casino, Campbell. Hmm. Oh, and then we have the second row. Don't look at the second row, I told you. Look only at the upper row. In Try to figure out what's the correct. Forever. <laughs> You're actually very close. You don't, you actually don't, make don't, the don't things as Don't gamble with they are. your life because diamonds are forever. <laughs> this um, is not a series. There is a connection between them. They're all connected to something, and this something also connects to one of the pictures on the lower row. You actually said it. I'm in I have no idea. Maybe, yeah. maybe, uh, maybe, uh, maybe. <laughs> no, 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 no. Time is up. But I assure you that if you would have said those two things in a group, someone would pick it up. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because diamonds are forever. Dr. No, mm -hmm. Golden Eye, Casino oh, uh, Royale, yeah, yeah, Casino yeah, yeah. Royale, yeah. because of the town. And so the answer is? It's a James Bond movie. A, these are James Bond movies. And the correct answer is? Mm. Uh, it's D, uh, from Russia with love. Correct from Russia with love. Yeah. So you see these. So uh, you're actually very close because you named the first two by their names, mm -hmm. and people will hear "Diamonds Are Forever." For some of them, it will be like uh, the beers, Diamond Company kind of. Uh, okay, a doctor who says no will for some people land in the area of medicine. But a lot of people, if they hear diamonds are forever, oh, diamonds are, oh, it's, maybe it's James Bond, and then everything else falls into place, and then it works. Okay? Nice. Maybe so, um, I should cut out this part and just let viewers contact you to find out the answer. <laughs> for this one? Yeah. You know what? Let me, let me uh, uh, put another riddle for everyone. Yeah. And uh, we're not going to say the answer. We're yes. not going to say the answer. Maybe we'll say it at the end. Okay? <laughs> So let me just pick uh, one for the crowd. Let's see. Okay, this is one uh, for for you viewers. This is a blue question. You have 60 seconds. See if you can figure it out in 60 seconds. What's the connection between the pictures? Can you tell? 15 seconds have passed. This is 45. A tough one. This is actually a semi-tough. Okay, it's a, it's a blue one. For most people in Western society, when we say what the answer is, they will say, of course. Of course it is. So, I mean, there's no avoiding the subject. 
So if everyone are watching this and trying to solve and not finding the answer, then you have to definitely contact Nadan to find out what is the correct answer. <laughs> okay, a few more seconds to go. This, this way you play fair and square. You know if you're up, up for the challenge. And time is up. Okay? Did you figure yes. it out? Wait till the end. You have to wait till the end to get yeah. the answer to this yeah. one. Okay? All right. Mm -hmm. well, I'm going to stop uh, presenting for now. Yeah. Okay? Um, so I'm just going to say a few words about uh, costuming the game uh, for, um, you know, for customers who want it to be personal, to, to, to be about them. We actually did it everywhere from companies to um, uh, holidays to um, uh, birthdays, okay? So the way the game is built is that you, in the indoor game, the only thing you have to do is change the slide, the PowerPoint slide, just change the picture actually of the slide. I'll show you how easy it is, okay? I'll just show you how easy it is. Okay, so I'm going to share the screen for a second. If we decide to take this picture and change the picture, we have actually an extra PowerPoint uh, that you can simply fit the pictures inside. Because this way, over here, you cannot move the pictures. And all you have to do is basically uh, create a change the picture. So I'm just going to delete it so you will see this is it. Okay. You put the picture in its place, and this is it, and it's changed. You have your own picture there. So the only thing I will show you, this is a trial version, but I will show you with a not trial version. The clock stays, the music stays at the corner, so all the effects. The only thing you need to do is just put a different slide instead of this one. The game runs exactly the same. You do not have to change a thing in Lockwiz. It's all over here. Because when they get a question, the answer, so the one thing to, re to remember, and this is important, the answer has to be A. The answer actually has to be A for this to, to be the same. If you put the answer C, that they will all get incorrect answer, even though they got the correct answer. So this is how simple it is. This is it. This is how simple changing the indoor game is to anything that you want. You have to be creative to create your own kind of things and... Um, we won't have time for this now, but we have many, many examples of how we create this uh, from uh, companies who um, moved from different locations. And then you put the three locations and you ask what's connected to them or um, you put the fourth location uh, as one of the, the options in the bottom. Okay. Um, or you put uh, the CEOs backwards or um, or it can be just a question like, what is our most common bug? And you can represent this bug anywhere you want. If the bug is called the uh, Trojan horse, you can put a picture of Troya of, uh, and, and other names of bugs and, and just the bug. And you can play with the pictures and, and create. Just remember, if you want to keep it creative, keep it, keep the associations live. Okay. If you just write Trojan and then whatever bug, then it's one thing. But if you actually put a picture from Troy from the movie and you put a picture of a bug and you put a picture of an electric shock or something, then people have to not just know that it's, it's the Trojan, but also figure out which one is the Trojan. Okay. The topics are immense from history to math uh, to um, history. Uh, did I say I said history? To leaders, to countries, to food, stories, movies, uh, sports, you name it. Everything. Like everything. So if, if, if you're not a big reader, you might miss a few reading uh, questions, but you will get the sports. Okay? Or... Uh, kids' stories or something like that. Okay. 
So this is how... This is really easy to actually to adapt in any language because you it's not text heavy, it's picture heavy and... It's zero text, it's actually. In, it's there is no text. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Zero text. The only thing, like, even if you figure out the chain is a, is a connection and arrow is a series and you don't know how to read whatever is going on here, you can still play the game. Okay. I will, I will uh, advise people who take this game and work with it to create a local version of the game. This is the international version. In the local version, we actually play with Israeli pop or with events that happened or with leaders we represent or with the hottest TV series that's going on and we represent each character in just one item and they have to figure out like what's the connection. Okay. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing this uh, part of the screen and uh, screen and then I'm, I'm, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the way it works as an outdoor game. And let me just say that our best selling game is an outdoor game because of the way we can change it. And I'm, I'm going to give two business cases uh, for working with this. Okay. So when we give instructions for the game, well, you know what? Let me let me start with uh, with the game itself. So this is the game on, in Lockwiz, and when I, what actually uh, happens in Lockwiz. Let me just make all the teams uh, vanish. What happens in, in Lockwiz is in Battle Bingo is that we take all the points from the card that they can see in the playground and we spread them around just like this. Okay. So we spread them around the area. And now if you want to create some sort of combination, you have to kind of figure out what's going on around you. You have to plan your strategy, how you're walking to a particular place and not to another. And maybe your strategy is to get as many points as possible. Uh, and what you're going to do, you're going to kind of take everything in your wake. And maybe if you see that you're very close to getting something, you will make one diversion just to make sure that you have some sort of price. Because if you don't get the first one, maybe you don't get nothing. Okay. So we this, usually we play the game for two hours. However, uh, we control how long the game takes by how close the points are to one another, right? Because you want people to get as many riddles as possible to get towards filling the cards. And so if you have, this is a game for an hour and a half, for example. So we make everything like closer together. And if we want half an hour more, we'll simply spread the points just a little bit more, just a little bit more. And people will have more time walking around. Unlike the indoor game, there is no time limit on the riddles. Okay. You can spend there half an hour trying to figure out what, what's happening, but this is probably a bad strategy to spend half an hour. If you have two hours. So we switch from answering fast to kind of um, managing your time and your strategy. This game is played in teams of five. We try not to have a teams of four, even though if you have uh, tablet, tablets, <coughs> then it's easier. Teams of five. We start. They get the two pop questions that explain how this game works. And then they run out there. We actually did this game uh, without having, we, we did it once because we prefer having someone out there, but we ran a, a, this game once without anyone being there because the game explains everything. You simply put in username and password. It, actually, during COVID, we did this. We sent them the, the, the instructions, which I will show you in a second. We weren't allowed to meet them because they were in capsules and they were outdoor. So we sent them the instructions. We had someone online talking the, the game, and then we had just had someone at home sitting and looking over it. The ratio is like one to 50, one instructor to 50. The game runs itself. The only thing you need to do is look at the chat for the point where people uh, give the bingo. Okay. They have a bingo. And so they, <coughs> they shout bingo. If you have it on your app, if you control the game with the app, you will see the chat. You don't even have to look. It will pop on the chat. Okay, of the app. Very, very easy game to run. 
our record is 1,000 people run by six persons, six instructors, 1,000 face-to-face game, face-to-face game, 1,000 people, same area, all of them, same location, six instructors. We, we, we got two phone calls during the entire event, 143 teams. 143 teams. That is impressive. This is this is why it's a great money maker. This is why it's a, it's a very good money maker. So people run around, they answer the questions. If I'll show you the chat, um, you can see that they wrote the words over here, so we can see them. Okay, uh, writing their numbers and and so on. Some of them just try, like eight eight eight. Is not a winning number, but they tried. They uh, or not a winning like word, but they thought maybe maybe we chose eight 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 as as something. Okay, uh, our instructor is communicating with them. See how little communication there is in the game. Okay, the only thing that they do is uh, report the bingos. When they come back, they're eager to know the answers. So we let other. So oh, what what was the answer with the diamonds? And we let other people answer. Okay, so this is very cool. Uh, they do not know the scores until the end, so they don't know who got first place. Basically, the rules are that if first place also got another prize, let's just say they got the roll, the X, they were really good, and they got the first prize. So they get the first prize, but the X goes to second place and the row goes to third place. So score kicks in if someone from the top got more than just the top. They got a co another prize, another combination, so they drop it one level down. It's not going to be the second person who had an X. It's going to be the second one in score. So we're not looking back to see who got an X because people know that if someone got the X, nobody else, like, it's there's no point reporting your X. Uh, what else? We incorporate in this uh, game, we incorporate like extra uh, uh, points for taking pictures of whatever, okay? Depending on the area, like if we do it in a forest, we will not do things involving other people. Uh, but if we do it in a city, we might like uh, shake hands to five people or sing to people or whatever, like scavenger hunt uh, missions are there. Uh, when people ask us in this game at the beginning, we actually change the riddles. Like we change the game, we change the riddles. If people ask it to be personalized, now what we do, we simply have pop-up questions that will, so the personalized questions will pop up every once in a while, like bonus questions. They will not affect the board, but they will affect the score. Okay. So people love this. And, uh, yeah, and this is it. All the rest is, um, we actually have clues in this game. We create, we have clues in the game. Uh, there are five clues. So if there is a tie at the top, the team that used the last amount of clues wins the game. Okay. Um, yeah. This is the game. Very easy to run. Very easy to custom made. Pits teams, both like very like high tech, but we actually also ran it for a mining company, 4,500 people in 150 different events. So this is uh, also my um, kind of a, a very specific business case. We spoke to the company who wanted to involve something about like um, they wanted to involve in their fun day, the once a year fun day, they want to involve something that's both going to be fun and it's going to be about them. So we created an entire battle bingo, not one of our questions. And we took the, there's actually like nine different factories to this mining company. We took from each, we, we created the much smaller form. So it wasn't um, a seven by seven, it was a five by five. And we put pictures that are about them. We ask each factory to send us like nine questions. Once they send us the question, we ask them to record one of their employees asking the question about them. Like, 
how many tons of uh, sulfate does this reactor can handle? Okay, so we had a person from the factory who actually like built this reactor and they asked the question and there are answers. They absolutely loved, loved, loved it. So for every game, we had nine questions that are about them, about this particular factory, four questions that are about the big, the big company, the big factory, and four to five questions about other factories. But only the coolest one, only the ones that brings the most pride. Because if they know, hey, our company, we have our magnesium into Toyota cars, or we have the only device in, in the world that cr create this, this was cool. And we wanted to put this up front. Three years in a row, 150 people, actually um, um, 150 uh, um, events every year. They loved it. They absolutely loved it. Okay. So uh, yes. what I get from you as an organizer, it's really easy to run. Uh, as a participant, the tasks are highly uh, fun and interesting. Plus, you might have like customized tasks in the game. Yes. So think about regular questions where there you can find the answer in Google. Okay, let's just say you have this. It's either you know it or you don't. And there might be some person in the team that knows all, you know, knows most of the stuff. Okay. If somebody answers the question, you, you, you don't feel involved because someone else answered the question and it's their win. Right. However, if there is an associative game and you get a chance to say even something small during the, the, the thought process, you're part of the thought process. And so this is your win as well. This is what makes this game so loved by people. Okay, so just uh, play with this idea in your head of a riddle that everyone is involved in solving. If you said something out loud, you either eliminated an option or you made it closer to a uh, solution. And every once in a while, there will be something you say, oh, I know this one. I know this one. Okay, because I know, I know soccer, football. Okay, or I've seen all the James Bond movies, or I have little kids, so I know there's some things that our parents will will um, figure out faster than than parents. Yeah, so uh, this, is, this is it, mm -hmm. Battle Bingo in uh, all its uh, glory. Thank um, you. It was a thrilling presentation with so many examples. That's amazing. Yeah. So uh, uh, let me just say what you need to do to get started, okay? Because mm -hmm. uh, from uh, from field to plate, kind of. Uh... Yeah, that would be my next question. You know, if someone really, really wants to play this game, how they should contact you? And also, if someone wants to implement this in their event company or team building company, then what should they do next? <laughs> So if you want to, uh, so let's start with people who just want to have this event. Uh, let me say that the indoor version is an hour long. Okay. And if you're the one passing it, you should try a bunch of times to get the tempo correct. We ask people all the time, like what the answer is. And there is a whole play. You should see one game before, uh, uh, before you, uh, you run it for yourself in an indoor, um, uh, kind of environment because there is a dynamic with the crowd. Okay. There is a dynamic with the crowd and some people, Oh, I know, I know the answer. I actually got it correct. It's only that I got it correct. And they say the answer is D because, and then they give the most ridiculous answer. So this is something to work with. Oh my God, you were, the, you won the more uh, luck than brains reward for this particular uh, question. That's great. It is the correct answer for not the correct reason. Anyone knows what the correct reason. And, and so you can, you can play with this, allow people to feel like, um, like they got it. Okay. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, the indoor game we've done, uh, from we had a hundred, I'm taking it like the, the top a hundred physics professors from all over the world. The convention, we ran this particular game. They absolutely adored it. They loved it. It challenged them. It really challenged them. 
and we had it for kids. So we have uh, a pack of questions for kids. We have this whole presentations for for kids, and and uh, it will not fit you wherever you are, uh, because usually kids are familiar like with the local um, uh, pop culture and stuff like that. Uh, we will not put a James Bond riddle of movies from the 60s if we have teens or kids or whatever. Um, we create an entire new set of riddles that, that, that fit. So uh, one, one um, answer that I, I was diverting, if you want to run this game in your company, for your company, you should have um, uh, someone professional do this. Okay. Uh, if you do it online, um, this could be uh, me or one of our top uh, uh, presenters. If it's an online game, and we've done online games before on a global scale from India to Brazil, one game, 200 people, finding the time is, is difficult, right? Uh, through Europe and everything. Um, if you want to run it in uh, in in an indoor uh, facility, in an indoor place where everyone's around, you need to uh, um, actually train on this, on how to work this, on how to keep the tempo. You should train. You shouldn't do it for the first time, uh, not to mess up with the questions and everything. If you want to do it outside, it's actually even easier than doing it inside because there is just giving the instructions and, and uh, placing the game. What we do is we move the game to your location, you will have to make one run to make sure that we didn't place any point, you know, in an, in an open, uh, construction site or behind, behind the fence. We don't see fences in, in, in Google map. So you may have to make sure to run to walk through all the points. We will move points as we see your track. We will move the points if after, after you do it once. The instructions are very easy to understand. Let me just show you for a second. It's in Hebrew, but, uh, um, hopefully you, you will get the, the idea. So th these are instructions. We have them in English as well. Sorry, I don't have it here. But this is the instructions we give them. You actually have like arrows telling you exactly what's going on in every place. This is how you find the location. This is the menu. This is how missions look like. If you want to go inside, the this is you. If you want to go inside, just zoom in. This is how it looks. Just walk straight into the purple circle. Uh, ticket, map, okay, this is how you move from ticket to map, a whole row. Uh, if you got a bingo, the, the appropriate shield, the matching shield will appear over here. And so you have everything. You've got everything over here. We actually have QR codes to answer um, questions with GIFs, like how do I know my score? And you see a GIF sending you to the menu, open the menu, press score. Okay, so we have that. Uh, Everything is here. Like everything is here. Instructions are actually a page long. Okay. This is just an A4 page long. You have to explain the prizes. You have to, uh, to explain the time, uh, safety instructions and, and, and up you go, out you go. Once you locate one of the games, it's there to stay. Just check it out every once in a while, just to see that again, no construction sites or, or stuff outdoor in the forest, indoor, wherever you want, okay? I indoor meaning, uh, I'm, I'm talking about urban areas, not indoor, uh, but also indoor. Urban areas, you can look, uh, place it all over the streets, change some of the, the, the questions to fit the monuments, the history and everything. We do small adjustments, especially when, when we want to leave the game there and it's an important place for us to put it. Okay, one conversation with us will uh, um, locate the game where you are, send the instructions, and you're done. Mm -hmm. If uh, if you're a company owner and you want to have this part of your uh, um, kind of arsenal, um, uh, give us a call, get instructions, locate the games. Usually, uh, company owners know how to look uh, to place the games uh, wherever. Every time you place a game in a different place, it's there to stay. We make constant improvements in the game all the time with every uh, lock we've changed uh, and um, there have been a lot lately. We make uh, appropriate changes. Check with us once in a while if there's a new version, okay? That's easier to play, that has more movies, that whatever, okay? Yeah. Really nice. 
Um, I have actually one bonus question to you. Go ahead. If our viewer should remember only one thing from today's conversation, what should it be? Um, can I choose two? You can choose two. It's associations. <laughs> okay. I'll choose two. This game is a skeleton key. It opens every door. Okay. You get this game, you get the package, it opens every door. It doesn't matter what the event is, it will probably fit. Okay. We need a 300 meter radius to play battle bingo outside. So people will actually have an opportunity to walk. But you can put it inside a mall in QR codes. And so people will have to search for them with using clues. Okay. So you see the card. You press, it says, oh, um, it's near the record store. And when you go and scan it, and so this is an extra version. So it's a skeleton key. Everywhere and anywhere, Christmas, birthdays, company events, this is it. This is why our salespeople know, uh, so what do you say? Battle bingo. Like it's, for sure it will fit, okay? Maybe there will be something that will fit better, but then let's wait to see what, what else they're saying. But Battle Bingo always fits whatever you want. And the second thing is the content, okay? It's very hard to understand this game without understanding how the riddles are built and why the content is so important. The way the content works is that it incorporates everyone everyone it creates a conversation not that not an and i know i know i know it actually creates conversation and people are engaged with one another this is a not one person game that one person runs around they know the answers or they don't say hey what's the answer no everyone looking together every person sees something different and they appreciate that the way they see things differently help their team so these are the two things that... Yeah, uh, thank you. <laughs> so um, I'm very grateful you managed to join this presentation today. And I'm sure you have other really interesting games in your portfolio. So maybe you will introduce them later in the future because this is an ongoing series uh, to bring your game on. Okay. And, uh, I hope you have a really successful autumn season and um already you. booked already booked <laughs> cover to cover <laughs> but thanks a lot yeah, yeah. next bye. time we'll do the armada maybe yeah maybe armada okay yeah. bye 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 bye